there's a way to make an entrance. This is my destiny. It was now a conspiracy of witches. Download Veely today. Hello and welcome to Mothership. I am Ellie Gibson and today we're going to be talking about fussy eating, uh, which is very exciting. So I'm joined by uh, Sarah Rose Gregory, you're a mindful eating expert. I don't know why I did that, just for <laughs> emphasis. I can't say mindful without doing that, I hope that's not offensive. Um, and Stuart Heritage, you're at... <laughs> that is, surely, is that not your real name? That... Were you expecting me to say something else? <laughs> Are you, are you okay? I'm fine, I'm fine. Yeah. Are you having an episode? No, no? I don't know I did that. I'm, I apologise. Stuart Heritage, <laughs> you are a journalist and father and struggling to keep your tea down. Yes, so. yeah. Uh, it's a very bad reflux. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, and now, um, so we are going to be talking about fussy eating. Now, uh, let's kick off with you, Stuart, because mm. my we, we were talking a little bit before. Um, I've got two sons, both of whom are, are pretty dreadful. Yeah. How, how about you? I have one... Uh, three year old right. and one who doesn't eat so we'll forget about him cancel completely. him he's yeah, not he interesting count. you know we're, um, we're not talking about him yeah um, and he I, when I first thought about this I thought well he's not a fussy eater at all he eats everything I give him and then I realised it's because I've just capitulated to, <laughs> to his demands and I only give him the five things that he eats so oh, he, what are the five things he right? likes spaghetti bolognese any sort of pasta cheesy pasta anything with cheese on it uh, sausages any sort of meat so long as we tell him it's sausages. Um, <laughs> vegetables, like salad vegetables. He eats cucumber and tomatoes, but nothing else. Spinach, no. Mushrooms, definitely no. Mm. Uh, I, was, I was just telling you earlier, we haven't had a stir fry for 18 months because it's just, <laughs> we may as well just give him nothing. It's, it's, oh. The hardships parents go through, I mean, it's, I know, just, we can't it's even... just unbearable, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Um, I, so I have a sort of similar problem. So my six-year-old, he's quite good actually with things like, he, he quite likes sushi and curry, which I'm very smug about. Um, but yeah, he won't eat vegetables. He won't eat tomatoes or cucumber or any of the, you know, things you can usually shove in most children. Um, he will eat carrots, but uh, only if they're Welsh bunny carrots. <laughs> so, so to explain, in, just in case people don't get the reference, uh, my, uh, my in-laws live in Wales and we went there once a few years ago and lovely Grandma Jean, uh, she sort of julienned these carrots and cooked them very nicely, much, with much more effort than I would ever put in, and he ate the carrots. So now he will eat carrots, but you have to say, these are Welsh bunny carrots. Mm. And if you don't say that, if you just give him carrots, he'll go, uh, are these from Wales? <laughs> and you have to go, yes, I popped to Cardiff this morning to Cardiff Sainsbury's and got them. So, yeah, so I think we're in a similar situation. So, Sarah, yeah, you're a Sarah. mindful eating expert. What do we do? Do you want to increase the vegetables? Is that what you're asking? You I think that's I question do. one, Definitely, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, I think, yeah. Can I just start off by saying vegetables are weird? They are. In texture, the way they look, how they taste. And so you, you have to, you're expecting quite a lot of a three-year-old right. to... Get in, get in and dig in and eat them. So I think if you start from that foot, you might start understanding where they're coming from. And then you've got to kind of work your way around to how to get there. So, sorry. I, I would say um, you, for one thing, I would eat stir fries. Really? I would have them in the middle of the table because he's not seeing them. He's not seeing you embellish it. He's not seeing you enjoy it. He's not seeing you eat it. So why would he eat it? You don't have to make him eat it, mm. but you could give him a spoon and let him serve himself a little bit on a separate plate to what he's eating, which is pasta. Right. Um, why not stir fry the pasta? Haven't thought of that, have you? <laughs> <laughs> is that as well? I mean, also, I would, I would build out, I wouldn't even start with the the stir fry, I would build up more. He is eating. So you said he likes pasta. Does he have pesto with it? Sometimes. Yeah. Can you change the colour of the pasta? Yeah. Can you look at what different te what texture that is and how you can build that out? Um, right. So build on what he's eating first, and you enjoy that with him as well, and just make it really social and fun, and sometimes a bit of distraction. And I don't mean with an iPad. I mean with an engaging story or a poem. Or, you know, make mealtimes a thing that you want to come and join the table for. You look forward to mm. it. So, yeah, I, I think we've just got to take, as parents, we've got to take a step back and think that it is quite a big, a big deal to eat vegetables because they're not always that nice. Like, I love sprouts. 
I love aubergines. I love all of these things. But as a child, I hated them. Mm. Mm. And, we, and we all get there at some point. But I think we have to learn how to get there. And we have to see our parents. You're the role models. You have to see you enjoying it. God, I'm not, eating, I'm not eating sprouts for no man. <laughs> Forget <laughs> it. Um, but, but how much of a problem is it then? So let's say, so, so my eldest son will only eat carrots. My youngest son, the only thing he likes is corn on the cob, right? Mm. So that is obviously what they have most meals. Now, how much of that is a problem? Because on the one hand, I know you're supposed to have a balance and a rainbow yeah. vegetables and doing the mindful thing again. But um, on the other hand, surely getting some vegetables into them, even if it is the same ones over and over and over and over and over and over and over again, is better than none? Yeah, I think so. And I mean, there's different things you could do. You always have this kind of secret sauce where they're younger. You know, when you make up mm. the pasta bolognese sauce and you blend loads of vegetables yep. into it. Or you can do it with bolognese. You can add, lo add lots into that. I'm not a great fan of that because I like my children. to. I want them to trust me. Mm. I want them to know that I'm not tricking them. And so I tell them what's in their food and we talk about it. But I mean, there's other things you can do, like a shot glass. You could put carrot soup in it. And then you can all have a shot before dinner. So, so <laughs> don't worry about your children eating vegetables. Teach them how to do yeah. shots. Yeah. That sounds with, like with a game to sandwich. Yeah. Yeah. Why not Bloody Mary? <laughs> it's tomatoes. Yeah, exactly. It's tomatoes. And they're going to get Lovely. there in the end anyway. I mean, you can make it fun. We've got um, chopsticks for kids. So, you know, um, you know, they put their fingers in and you can put broccoli there with like sesame oil and all that thing. You'd have someone's eye out in my house. It's just a <laughs> health and safety nightmare. I don't know, just make it fun and just, but don't force it. And I always keep separate plates so you don't contaminate their food. So whatever they like, they have here. I would never put something that I know they don't like or it's new to them on that plate. I would have right. a different plate and I would put that food there and then let them choose to eat it or not eat it. And... They will come, the more they see it, they will become familiar with it. It doesn't look weird anymore. And they might not try it at your house. When they go to their friend's house, that will be familiar to them and they'll try it there, peer pressure. Mm. It How sounds like a lot of effort. <laughs> <laughs> well, I d it depends where you want to go because there is that whole spectrum that kids will eat. They won't starve themselves mm. and they will get there in the end. Yeah. But some kids won't. I've seen a document like BBC Three documentary mm. about adults who only eat buttons and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so it happens. You can it, really mess it up. It yeah. does. And so it's your choice because that could be your child. All right. All so right. it's up to you whether you're going to put the effort in or not. Yeah. I mean, are, are your children fussy eaters then? Do they? They were. Yeah. They're not now. I mean, we go through varying degrees of it. Like, um, and as they get older, they do get better. But I think it's because they've had the exposure and mm. they've seen like us eat and we always eat as a family mm. should like we cats. eat cats that's, <laughs> that's the big question on everybody's lips there. on the facebook um, uh. so yeah i i think they because they've learned how to eat and how to enjoy it they they're very up for trying new foods and stuff like that but i don't put pressure on them i don't say you've got to eat five fruit and vegetables mm. a day i don't create anxiety around it i don't stress about it and they eat a balanced diet. I mean, there was that study done, I don't know if it was like in the 50s, and they did, they, they watched kids over a period of a weekend. They put, they exposed them to loads of sugar and loads of healthy food. And at the end of the weekend, they ate a balanced diet. So they will get, they will gorge on sugar, mm. but they will eat the healthy stuff too. This is, I think, unwittingly, this is what I'm doing. I'm overexposing my child to chocolate. Mm. In the same way that like a dad would sit his kid down if he found a packet of cigarettes <laughs> and just made him smoke the whole thing. I'm just What's wrong with that? Is giving... that, is that you're not supposed to do that. You're not supposed to do that. <laughs> I think it's bad. But yeah, I've just I, I've been giving him so many bad stuff just because it's easy that now he's he's rejecting cake. Yeah. That's the first step, isn't it? Yes. That, that's a good. That's, a, that's a healthy messed, thing to you, do. No, right? you've messed him up for life. That's, he's really enjoying <laughs> right. That's all right. I don't know. Sugar's one of those things that's quite hard because it's so addictive. Mm. That combination of sugar and cocoa and cream is lovely, but it's really addictive. So I don't know. That's hard. I think that's hard for adults to break. Yeah. But I think if you learn bad habits, you can unlearn them. So you don't have to sweat it. So you maybe you've done that for three years, but it doesn't mean that the rest of his life has to be that way. You could start from tomorrow doing something different and he's going to learn pretty quick kids do yeah so here's my question so um so you've, you've cooked the nice healthy meal or whatever yeah or sometimes um with my littlest kid it'll be something he's eaten a thousand times before but tonight it's just not acceptable oh we're just not going to eat it today he'll eat it tomorrow but not tonight mm. um so he won't eat his food now what do i do then do i just go right well you're going to have to be hungry or do i give him a yogurt or a bread and butter sandwich he, he loves a bread, bread and butter sandwich it makes me sound like a victim. Victorian, He's but that's a, a big hit in it. Yeah. <laughs> 
And do you, do you offer an alternative that you know they'll eat? This or... is a really I mean, important question. Oh, sorry. I, I mean, I wouldn't stress about it to start with. You cook this lovely meal and I let my children serve themselves, but I always give them a side offering of something. So my daughter, for ages, she would only eat peanut butter pitters. Mm. And so I would make one and chop it up. I wouldn't give her enough that she wouldn't eat that as well. So it wouldn't be overfilling. But I would never refuse her having yog yogurt and fruit afterwards either because mm. it's... You might lose that battle, but you've got to win the war. So it's the long picture. It's about them sitting at the table. It's about them being happy to be there. You want them to come back the next night to eat that meal. So it's not always about that one meal. It's so not you wouldn't about go that. down there, you're not leaving the table until you Never. eat your Brussels sprouts? No. Because you're not inhuman. So no. yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> so yeah, you know, you just, you want them to grow because actually when they leave, like my son's 19, he's nearly 20. When he goes off and leaves the house, I can't control what he eats. He's got to make the right decisions. So that's what I've got to teach him. Mm. I've got to teach him how to make those right decisions. What are the right choices? All of that, not tell him what to do. Yeah. Because, he, you know, I won't always be there. What do you do if, if Herbie won't eat something you've cooked? It happens regularly. Right. We just... I, I, I'm just taking to picking up the fork and feeding him myself. Mm. We, and he eats it in, in that way. But it's just such a negotiation. Mm. And the thing I find the hardest is it's always like at the end of his day. Dinner's always at the end of his day, so he's tired, I'm tired. Mm -hmm. My, I don't have any, pa well, I have some patience because I'm not a monster. <laughs> <laughs> I have reduced patience. No, we know that feeling. I think we all know that feeling. Yeah, and it's like, everything oh, just gets a bit fresh. Just, please, yeah. please just eat something. Um, so, I mean, sh he should try some, right? He's yeah, for sure. And actually, I don't know what your childcare situation is, but my mm. daughter used to eat dinner at lunchtime. Ah. And so when it came to dinner time, she would just be trying food. But I already knew that she ate her cheese pasta, pasta and pesto, which she ate every day mm. at lunchtime, and she had a plate of it. That's interesting. He eats like he eats better at lunch than he is at dinner. Yeah. I think because he's less tired. Yeah. Mm. Maybe that's the experiment. Yeah. Well, speaking of experiments, so um, Imogen Chapman has got a comment for us on the Facebook. She says, "What is right and what is wrong?" I mean, that's a big question. <laughs> <laughs> but let's. Let's assume she's talking about fussy eating rather than <laughs> Brexit or something. Um, my mum gave me bland food and then I developed a taste for more interesting and spicy food. Then five years later she had my brother and she thought she did it wrong. So she gave my brother Ollie the same food as them, tasty and spicy. And then when he got to six, he wouldn't eat their food anymore and demanded bland food. So she gave the first child spicy food. No, she gave the... Yeah, the first time bland food and then it liked spicy food. And the second, Why she did that, no one knows. Um, what is right? Does it depend on the individual? Yes, I think so. And I don't think because because those two children might have been different anyway. Right. Mm. Um, you know, so do we have different taste buds yes. in okay. All of my four children have been completely different in what they eat and what they like. Mm. Um, but I do do one pot meals. So they I was going to say, yeah, you don't cater for them all individually. No, no, we do one pot meals. And actually, I talk them through it because you can train your taste buds. So after 10 or 15 times, but you can't say, I don't like it, I don't like it, I don't like it. You have to give it a try. Mm. But in an unpressured kind of environment and you're willing to try, you open up to it. So 10 to 15 times, you're going to like it. Mm. So, yeah, you can train yourself to like things. And, um, yeah, I've forgotten. I've lost the thread. I see, I see. I've been trying to make myself like whiskey and olives for 30 years. And I, just, <laughs> I don't feel like I'm a proper grown-up. I'm not a grown-up until I can eat olives. Yeah, but they're, they're revol no, they're revolting. No, I'm afraid, you're, I'm afraid you've made a mistake. No, you're, <laughs> you're incorrect. You're, do you agree with me? I hate olives. Yeah. I love Sorry. olives. You've just not tried the right olive. Oh, oh don't make me go on a big olive hunt. <laughs> <laughs> I've got enough on my plate. Um, uh, now, can we can we talk about snacks? Because this mm. is something that I uh, struggle with. So my youngest is three, yeah. and he was he was born nine weeks premature, so he was very little, and he was still little when he started eating. Mm -hmm. So with my first son, as I think we often are with our first child, I was very like, oh no, eating between meals. With mm. the second one, I was just like, we've got to build him up. Just shove cheese, biscuit, like throwing <laughs> cheese strings at him, <laughs> like just darts at a dartboard, just like. So I let him basically eat whatever he wanted. Yeah. Not obviously not you know jaffa cakes and champagne, yeah. but yeah. you know. I let him eat the little organic baby biscuits yeah. that are supposed to be good for you. We all know they're not uh, all the time. <laughs> and now at three, sure enough, he loves snacks. He understands yeah. the concept of snacks. He asks for snacks yeah. all the time. And quite often I give in because I find it very hard to say to a child who's saying, mummy, I'm hungry, I'm yeah. hungry. Yeah. Yeah. I find it very hard to say no. And if I say you can have an apple, darling, yeah. he'll say, no, I don't want an apple. I want a snack. 
Help me, Sarah. Oh, gosh. I don't think you're wrong because okay. I think the end of, we all eat differently. Like, I'm a snacky person, so I don't really sit down and eat a big full meal or eat three meals a day. I'll eat consistently throughout the day. But my husband eats three meals a day. So I think as adults, we're, we eat differently. So I think you've got to listen to your body. But I wouldn't necessarily offer sweets and biscuits because if you're hungry, then, you know, peanut butter and um, a sliced apple mm. is ample or carrots, you know, because you could be craving the sugar. Mm. And that's the other thing. And also I'll ask them to have a drink of water first. Those, you see. I'm not trying to be difficult, but he, he will not eat a raw carrot. He will not eat a raw apple. He just... It's my fault. You just look at... I, just, I know it's my <laughs> fault, right? I know. <laughs> it's but too no, late now. But most of it, it's us. And I'm not just saying it's you. No, no, it's no. us as parents. It's yeah. what we do. Because, like, we don't want them to badger us. And they know we don't, they don't want us yeah. to badger us. They know that we've got a breaking point and that we're going to give in eventually. Yeah. So you've got to be strong. And he could badger you for three, five, but you know, oh, he's not he going to badger you for seven days in a row. Oh, mate. He's going to learn. Mate, mate, mate. He's going <laughs> to learn. You haven't tried it. He's going to learn. Wow. <laughs> what, what, what's your view on snacking? Heritage? I, uh, thank you for calling me by my surname. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you give it a sort of yeah, boarding nice. school I like it. It's nice. Uh, yeah, we let him snack indiscriminately, basically. But he's, he's actually pretty good. He loves fruit. So a uh, satsuma, that's a snack for mm. him. Sometimes... Uh, he's a big. He's really into chocolate fingers, so we just have to make sure we don't ha have any yeah. in the yeah. house. I can't have a secret stash of chocolate anymore because yeah. he knows. Oh, they're so yeah. clever! They yeah. They're like yeah. the raptors in Jurassic Park. They are like the raptors. <laughs> they exactly. just find a way. Yeah, they really find a way. I, yeah, it's, I'm the same. I can't say no. You can't eat anything, hungry no. infant, because that's, <laughs> yeah. that's, that's that's it. Feels heartless and. I don't know if it is or not, but it. it but I don't. And actually, um, you could give them more like. Does he like hummus? Like, you could give them more substantial snacks. Nope. Nope. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really not trying to I be could, difficult. No, not this at all. This is the reality of my I'm dreadful sure life. That, like, in the end, you can get to something, you know, popcorn or, I don't know, you can find popcorn, something. Popcorn, yeah. Popcorn, yeah. You know, and it doesn't have to be a mass of popcorn, but, you know, like, small um, portions or whatnot. But you, you can, there's things that you can build in that they do like, like what you would feed them at dinner. You could mm. give them as a snack a mini know, roast chicken it, something yeah. like that yeah a quail perhaps as i said snack. you know like a shot of carrot yeah, yeah. <laughs> i like the shot idea. yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna fill a mini bar up with yeah, yeah. Soups. so as you said your so your second son uh hasn't started eating no solid he's yet. he's sort of weaning currently right but and i'm hoping that you congratulate me for this when he starts putting things in his mouth, we give him a stick of carrot and he just gnaws on that. Mm. He can't eat it. He can't really. I did give him a pizza crust the other day. So that, forget I said that. <laughs> and he ate that and he enjoyed it. But he just gnaws on carrot. Yeah. Was it stuffed uh, crust? No, yeah. I wouldn't have given that away. <laughs> <laughs> stuffed crust. No, so he, he eats it. Um, he's at the stage where he can't really swallow. So he puts it in his mouth and everyone hovers mm. nervously over him. Um, but carrots, all right? Yeah, carrots, grass, fine. Yeah. Yeah, thank so, you. That's all I want you to say. But don't freak out about them swallowing it and chewing it. You've just got, because they'll freak out. Mm, so okay. you've just got to be calm. So when their eyes start watering, when his eyes start yeah. watering. Like when he goes blue, yeah. get up, home okay. maneuver, do that. That's fine. But whilst it, but trust him or her, trust okay. them yeah. to, yeah, trust him to uh, eat, be able to do it. Because it takes a while, you know, they like to get used to the texture. Yeah. There's loads, there's different things that you can do. You can put hummus and mango on um because my children used to get frustrated with slippery foods, but you can put them on like a rice cake. Right. And then eat them. Yeah. So they've got something to hold. That's mm. good. And I think with the second one, we've kind of... Well, I'm, I'm slightly cautious because I think we've developed some bad habits with the older one, and I don't want to... And with the second one as well, you're always a bit like... Ah. <laughs> they, they're a bit more indestructible than the first ones because you panic, like you were saying, you just panic endlessly over the first one. Um, so I just, yeah, I need to set some good behaviours. So what are you going to change? What are you going to do differently this time around? Well, I think um, having, which we've never done, having a, a bowl of food in the middle of the table and letting them help themselves. That's You're basically like just going to do everything she's just saying. Yes, said absolutely. <laughs> oh, my God. There's an expert here. Why are not going to listen to an expert? Yeah, I think so. And um, Serve everything in shot glasses. <laughs> Shepherd's yeah. pie, fish fingers, yeah. chicken yeah. nuggets. Yeah. Less, less rewarding with chocolate as well. Yeah. That's something I found out that I do. Yeah. Yeah. Um, how how bad is it to give your child a lot of fish fingers and chicken nuggets? Um, oh. Do you make them yourself? 
Um, so this is a <laughs> this is a true story. Uh, so I um, so I'm in a double act called Scummy Mummies yeah. with Helen Thorne, who's presenting some of these as well. And uh, I hope she won't mind me saying this. I had her son round for a play date, and that day I would usually give them frozen chicken nuggets, but for for tedious Joe Wicks related reasons, I had made some chicken nuggets. So and I knew that and Hugo, like my son, is can be a bit funny about food, but I thought chicken nuggets, it's chicken nuggets, right? So I made these chicken nuggets, and they looked, you know, pretty much normal chicken nuggets and I put them down in front of him and Hugo said um, are these homemade <laughs> <laughs> and like an idiot I went yes yes they are Hugo I've uh, made them specially for you and he went no. oh. <laughs> and he wouldn't eat them so you know what I'm saying is don't be about to tell me I've got to home make them because they're wasting my time <laughs> is that what you were gonna say no I just say I mean everything is fine just not too much of it I'm oh, like, okay. yeah, like, don't do that every day. And if you can make them, great. Like, my kids like salmon fish fingers, so I make them. Um, they're really easy to make. But, yeah, I just wouldn't do it every day. So, and get fresh rather than frozen, if you can. Okay. And just so I heard fish fingers are actually quite good for you because there's yeah. protein in there and just omega-3. The that's something that people need, is yeah. it? Yeah, or, or if the fatty ingredients. acids. Fatty I've, heard, acids. I've heard that in an advert. You can't have too many fatty acids. You know, yeah. and there are, there are good stuff. Just look at, like, the list on the back. If the ingredients is bigger than the box, then worry a little bit. Mm. So... That's, but, a, yeah. that's a good tip. And look tip. at the salt and sugar. And do you always right. have to cook fish fingers or can you do a sort of sashimi in the summer, a little fishy lolly? Is that uh, <laughs> you know? I'm joking, of course. Don't give your child uncooked fish fingers. <laughs> Very too much. Um, so we asked the internet uh, for tips on fussy oh. eating because that always works. If you don't know something, you ask the internet. Yeah. It always sorts of problems. What's the internet out, I find. said? Uh, the internet says eat your meals together as a family if possible. Good. Now that's hard because okay. you know what I mean. Feel people because it's not always possible with work and everything. Um, you can't always eat together. But you don't always have to be there. Like, it could just be one of you. It could be the childminder. It just needs to be an adult okay. that sits down and eats mm. together. Like, my husband's never home during the week mm. in the evening. So he doesn't sit down with us to eat. But I sit down with my children to eat. And also, if you want to eat with your husband, which is another thing that people do, you can serve yourself up the smallest bowl of food or a salad. Something that's not going to be taxing and you can still eat later. Oh, but I yeah. think sit down and enjoy food with your kids. You've got to break bread with them. Mm. Otherwise, how else are they going to learn how to eat and enjoy food? Oh. Do you always eat together as a family? I try to, yeah. Mm. Uh, there are times, uh, very rarely, because it, it never works, where he's sort of slumped on the sofa in front of YouTube, just missing his face. And that's, it's such a disaster. We don't do it now. So we've got a kitchen table. Yeah. We've got benches. Right. We all sit around it. Um, we all scream, just go, please eat. That's what yeah. happened from your eat together I just go <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> I struggle sometimes to get because my six year old's quite good at sitting down he's always like restaurants and things like that but the three year old quite often he's just he just doesn't want to sit yeah. at the table if you try and put him in a high chair he'll scream yeah. if you try and put him on a chair if he's doing something else you know like playing football or you yeah. know literally ripping the plaster off the walls which he, is a thing he likes to do oh, um, then <laughs> then do you how do you manage that do you make them sit down I ask straps? them to join us. No, right. no straps. <laughs> I, are, I do ask them to join us, but I do give them a choice. I don't have the TV on in the other room, though, or anything yeah. like that. Yeah. So I do ask them to join us, even if they don't want to eat. There's no pressure to eat. I just want them to come and spend time with us and talk with us. But stories, rhymes, you know, making it a place to be, even if you've got musical instruments or a game to play mm. at the oh, table. I could see that. Game of Monopoly and a shot of carrot. <laughs> yeah. that's, that's a good night in. I'm up for that. want to be there, see? Yeah, love Monopoly. Yeah, yeah okay, that's a good tip. Um, what else does the internet say? So the internet says, uh, if your child rejects the food, don't force them to eat it. Just take the food away without comment and try oh, to stay calm. Try to say try to stay yeah. calm. Oh, good, okay. Yeah. So I can Doesn't try you have for to. a bit. Yeah. And then yeah. Do you find that a struggle? Staying calm. I mean, well, generally. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm. I'm. Yeah. Especially if I've made, spent ages making it. Mm. That's and it's. I've really. I think my parents were really. They didn't like wasted food. Yeah. So to take a full plate of food away from a kid really annoys me. Mm. Um, Don't make them a full plate. No. Just make enough for you and your wife, and a little bit more, maybe that you wouldn't mind finishing the next day. Okay. So then you don't have that kind of 
yeah. emotional attachment. Yeah, that's exactly all it is. It's, I've got an emotional attachment to the food I've made and my son just ignores it. Yeah. Uh, try changing the form a food comes in. For example, try cooked carrots instead of raw or grated carrot. As, as I said, I mean, we've been through carrots. Um, but this was, the, I was reading about this the other day, uh, trying to solve my problem. And a thing I read said, oh, just make these courgette chips. If you just sort of dip these courgette, if you cut them into sticks and dip it into breadcrumbs, yeah. you know, all children, and it literally said, oh, I've never oh. seen a child turn down a courgette chip. Yeah, My children are not idiots. No. They know the colour green. Yeah. They know, they're just like, no. That's... But that's why I'm always honest. But I think that it's valuable um, with things like beetroot. Because just if they don't like raw beetroot, it doesn't mean they're not going to like it in another form. Mm. So if you make something like beetroot risotto, it's really sweet. Mm. And so, and it's, you know, it's rice and it's got a different texture, a different feel to it. Yeah. You know, so you can mix it up. But yeah, I, I think trying it in a different form. But don't try and mask and hide a courgette chip because it's not a chip. And serve yeah. it as a chip. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, I personally think beetroot tastes like soil and it's disgusting. So <laughs> you won't be having risotto. I see that like you're just passing down all your food prejudices. Yeah. Well, this is it. I love, I love cooking. I love food. I've got hundreds of cookbooks. I'm, I'm yeah. really into it. So it's really important to me that my kids are, are into it, mm. except for beetroot and Brussels sprouts, which as discussed are incorrect. Gotta find a way to like them. No, you don't. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> also olives. Um, <laughs> Um, yes, we've got some more questions, I think, here on the Facebook. Uh, Fleur, Fleur Fecker says, my little boy loves broccoli and carrots in the shape of throwing them on the floor. What tips can you share? I feel like I eat worse now food now too, which isn't great. Because there is this temptation, isn't it? If you don't want to cook two meals, you end up eating the fish fingers all the time. Yeah, yeah see, I don't do that. I, I'm, I'm quite stubborn. I, my kids know what I'm not going to budge on. And I know what they're not going to budge on. Okay. So it's about working within those means like there's there's certain things that I will be flexible about like I won't get angry with them mm. um so there's that saying isn't there about you what their choices are so they choose what when you know I can't remember what it is but they they make certain set of decisions and, and you make a decision so you choose what to cook and then they choose if they eat it or not and how much they eat and, and it's so it's that relationship building. Mm. You do it in other areas of your life, your other areas of your parenting. You've just got to bring it to the table. And it's that negotiation process. OK. See, you can do that. You, okay. Yeah, yeah, sure. I can. No, I can. I can. It's <laughs> fine. I, can do it, I suppose. <laughs> um, uh, here's another question. Uh, Mark McDonald says, what about allergies? Do you think eating out has become easier or more difficult for parents who have kids with allergies and intolerances? I think it's easier mm. because, oh, sorry. No, 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 I agree with you because everything's labelled. so much, yeah, it's labelled. Like I was in, can you say where you were? I was in ping pong and I had four menus and I was cross-referencing. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I think that's fantastic. Years ago, I could, I yeah. struggled to eat. Yeah, my husband's allergic to shellfish and now he'll say in the restaurant quite often he gets his own menu, which makes yeah. him feel very special. <laughs> so <laughs> I think it's a bit easier. Um, Oh, Amanda Louise Maddox says, my son has sensory processing disorder, so I fight a losing battle. That sounds really hard. That's really, really hard. I don't hard. know what sensory processing disorder She is. checked out your kid's table, because there's a lot around this in America. There's a big movement, and there's things like plate A and plate B, and I think it's your kid's table who've looked at that or have information around that. But, yeah, that's a, different, that's a whole different challenge yeah. and a set of expertise. And, actually, I think the univer Leicester University might be doing something around that. Okay. All right, yeah. so have a, have a search around. Uh, Michael L. Worrell says, my nephew only eats potatoes. <laughs> I heard there's such thing as a beige phase. Is this true? Yeah, I think when they talk about beige food, they're talking about um, fish fingers, chips. And, yeah. yeah. Or again, I think Helen has struggled with this. Her son will only eat sort of um, bread, chips. Yeah, uh, yeah just, just mm. all the magnolias, basically. Yeah, I think, um, I think when you're younger, you do like... We, we have different diets as adults, like we need more protein and, you know, veg, whereas children need more, they burn a lot more quicker. Right, so yeah. filling their bellies full of veg is no use to them mm. because their stomachs are small in comparison to us, they're really tiny. So if you fill it with veg, they can't do as much as they need to, mm. so actually eating pasta is not a problem. Oh, good, good. So what about the argument that 
make, like, so when I've talked to my mum or whinged on about my children not eating stuff, she's, she says to me, well, you didn't eat anything except from pasta with cheese and sweet corn till you were eight years old. And now I love, apart mm. from the aforementioned, I love all sorts of food and cuisines and I love cooking. So is there an argument that we're perhaps more worrying about this too much? Should we be blending vegetables and for, trying to gently get things into them? Or should we just go, do you know what? If they're eating a vegetable a day and some protein and some carb, that's all right? I think so, but with the attitude of um, exposure and eating together and teaching them what is healthy and what is not and not giving them too much sugar so that therefore they're addicted to it. You know, all of those, with that in mind, but I don't think we should stress about it. I think we should be more calm, but we should be more rigid about things like, you know, what we are going to eat as a family, you know, and don't bend that. So, yeah. Mm. Do you have like go-to family meals that everybody will will eat? Yes, and it's all we eat. We have like we eat the spaghetti bolognese twice a week, mm. uh, and sausages once a week, and it's just with, we're just locked in the same thing over and over again. You're uh, basically living in Goodfellas, you know. <laughs> basically, yeah, yeah. We're all in prison, slicing <laughs> garlic very thin with a razor blade. Great, you yeah. can break out of that though. Yeah, I think well, that's a good basis. Yeah, it's, it's difficult. It can't be done. <laughs> Yeah. I think you can build on those things, but <laughs> I think it eats more. Just getting stupid now. Yeah, you know. But I mean, even if you, if you tried lentil bolognese. No. And but it's had lentils. We actually, we did break, I, I gave him huevos rancheros two weeks ago oh. and he enjoyed it. Mm. So but that was, it, it? was, it was a ball ache to make. Yeah. So I'm not. Nigel Slater has a very good Nigel uh, uh, lentil bolognese recipe that really? my children will eat. Of course he does. Yeah. Uh, of course he does. You know, it's the most Nigel Slater thing I've ever heard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, well, it's got meat in it as well, I think. Okay. So, and bacon. So my, my children won't basically eat anything with bacon in it. Yeah. We just put bacon in everything. Bacon's yeah. terrible for you, though. Is it? Yeah. Oh. Isn't it a carcinogen now? Oh, yeah, I don't, yeah, I'm not too sure of what the old oh, no. processed meat like that. Oh, wow. <laughs> Need to cut that back a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> is it true that sugar is the big enemy now? Because I think there's been a, been a shifting thinking that fat is not actually as bad for us as we thought. What I'm saying is, please tell me it's all right to just eat butter with a spoon. <laughs> yeah, I'm vegan. Oh, right. <laughs> but, um, no, you know, like, me. Yeah, like, but I don't, I think everything in moderation. Mm. I think don't be extreme at anything mm. and just build a healthy relationship with food so yeah I, I mean so therefore I do eat a bit differently to my children they do eat some meat but mm. you know yeah know. How, how do you manage veganism and your kids then are they vegan as well no okay. no um, but they pretty much they predominantly have a vegan diet because I am and we eat the same thing but if we go out they do and they and they eat things like yogurt and they have milk you know so they it's not that they're vegan but mm. They do, they eat a well-rounded diet. Mm. What if they come to you, you know, in a couple of years and go, I want to I be vegan as well? Are you going to be like, yeah? Choice. Yeah, of course. And by then, I will be an expert. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> what if they come to you and say, I've had enough of veganism, I just want to eat yeah. loads of meat all the like, time? Like my son. I've bought a pig, <laughs> I've bought a pig and a knife. Yeah. Let's get into my it. My son always accuses me of depriving of protein. <laughs> <laughs> but actually, I proved to him that there's more protein. You're getting as a secondary source with animals, so... Mm. Yeah, yeah. Could you see your family getting to veganism? I have said that if my son uh, decides that he's going to be a vegan, I'm going to just go along with it because yeah. it's easy, easier for me to do it. And I think that would be the push that I needed. Mm. Uh, that so you quite fancy it? I kind of like yeah. the idea of it. And I mean, you look very oh. well. <laughs> 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 That was patronising so and insulting. Based on Sarah's complexion, <laughs> you're no, going to... You have, you have a 19-year-old yeah. child. Right, you look younger than me. <laughs> and it's because you don't You look younger than your 19-year-old child, yeah. to be oh, fair. No. <laughs> um, and, yeah, so I don't know uh, a, an unwell-looking vegan. Everyone seems to be very healthy and full of energy and life in a way that I'm not because all I do is eat chocolate and meat. Um, so, yeah, no, of course I would. I think... I, would you? Uh, can you have bacon? You can have bacon. <laughs> is it called bacon? Oh, no. I don't know about that. It sounds morally more questionable than eating meat. Bacon. <laughs> I'm not sure about that. Uh, well, there we go. I think we're going to wrap it up. Uh, thank you so much for watching and joining us today. Thank you for your comments. Thank you very much, Stuart Heritage Pleasure. and mindful uh, eating expert Sarah Gregory. Thank you. For, I feel I do feel enlightened. Yeah. No, I'm not? so pleased that you were here. Oh, yeah. You've solved all our problems. Thank you. 
Yeah. <laughs> Until next time, bye-bye.